Hey, man, and good to see everybody. Hallelujah. And first of all, happy Father's Day to every father. That's even on Facebook. Happy Father's Day. Amen. So it's good to see everybody this morning. Like I said, what Pastor Tarrant explained, getting involved with everything in this ministry. Amen. And even our prayer service, Friday night. Amen. And everything is exploding now, like back there. So that sound booth and hallelujah. And, you know, all these years we've been, people have been asking me, when is our guest ministers coming in? So now God released people coming in, so that's why they're coming in now. Amen. We have one more person to invite. I haven't called them yet. But for sure, I don't know what day he wants to come, come because he has a home church in, in Albuquerque. Amen. And so other than that, like I said, we've been bringing a couple of ministers in so they're to, to preach to us, to pour, to pour into our lives and pray that change take place in our life. Amen. So, you know, past, Mr. Pastor Arnold, you know, him and I, we know him for, we know each other for a very long time. Same ministry, under men, same ministry, under one ministry, and he's seen me grow. Amen. Amen. And so this is Pastor Arnold Allison, all the way from Farmington, New Mexico. Amen. A man of God. You know, it's really a privilege and honor for him to be here. I'm so happy. Amen. Praise God. Yes, sir. A little tape or something. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Well, it's great to be here, guys. Thank you so much. Honored to be here and spend time with you all, especially on Father's Day. Uh, as Pastor said, I'm known each other for for a while but he's a lot older than me so that's why we've been knowing each other for a long time <laughs> but I'm happy to be here we know and, and and we just we just love to praise God together we just love being in God's presence and sharing God's word and having that that, that connection between the two of us. Yes, that's perfect. Thank you. I come down here with you all and just share a little bit. Thank you. Perfect. So it's been great. It's been great in such a beautiful church. Amazing church. God is doing some great things here. Very excited to see it. Very excited to, to see how God is working and how he's flourishing and moving in your life. So it's an exciting time. As was shared earlier, come on, we just, y'all just got to plug in. Come on. Everything starts, everything that happens has a beginning. And you get plugged in in the beginning, and God sees your faithfulness as it begins to grow. Amen? Yeah, I like what the brother was sharing earlier about the offering. Can you imagine how your giving would change if you knew Jesus was coming back during the offering? If you knew Jesus was coming back, the, his, his rapture was coming right at offering time, I bet your offering would change. You'd probably be saying, okay, I'm going to empty that bank account because I'm going home. Imagine. Imagine how you would give if you knew Jesus was coming back right after offering. You wouldn't hold a thing back. You'd let it all go. Because it wouldn't matter anymore. Amen? It would not matter. Because God's doing something great. Hallelujah. So happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Happy Father's Day, Pastor. He's a great-grandfather now, right? <laughs> <laughs> I told you he was older than me. <laughs> Hallelujah. No, happy Father's Day to everybody. And in Ephesians 3, Paul has a prayer. It starts at verse 17, and he says, 
For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father from whom all of heaven takes its name. I love what the Amplified says. The Amplified says, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. That Father from whom all fatherhood takes its title and derives its name. Listen to that. The Father from whom all fatherhood takes its title and derives its name. So fathers are named after the Father. I said fathers are named after the Father. The, the, the concept of fatherhood, the, the, the name of fatherhood comes from our Heavenly Father. He instilled that into us, his people, his children, his creation. And the enemy has come in so many times and tried to distort that vision of what a father is. And so being a father is even more important today than it has ever been. So fathers, we honor you today. We lift you up because God has placed you where you are right now in this time to be that picture of the Heavenly Father on how he loves, how he cares, how he cherishes, how he teaches, instructs, and how he matures and raises all of us and he's put that very same desire and dream in you to mimic and do the same and we also remember those that that ha that their fathers are no longer here their earthly fathers and i'm blessed i still my heavenly my earthly father's still here and i have the i have the best father in the world and you may say, no, I do. Well, that's what you get for thinking. So I'll correct you right now. But I'm so honored and blessed that my, have, my earthly father is still here as well. But we remember those who have lost their fathers. And Father's Day sometimes becomes a, a rough period. So we honor you today. We remember you today. And those who maybe have never known a father, well, we want to take this time today and we just want to introduce you to the greatest father around our god our lord our heavenly father amen from whom all children and we're all his children receive their name amen so god does some incredible things and he's given us fathers he's given us leaders he's given us those that 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 oversee us that watch over us so we just honor all the fathers today and and god we say thank you for all those that you have put in our lives all those that you have placed in our path that you that are leading us that have taught us that have raised us father father that father may even be a mother that's serving dual roles lord and i pray lord that you would bless all fathers today that you would do an incredible work in their lives that you would turn father things for them, God, and you would show your hand mightily in everything that they are doing today, God. Instead of a day of sorrow, we believe that this will be a day of joy. And we, Father, honor you as our Heavenly Father. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you all, and so I had a bunch of books and uh, some different things to give out today, but my uh, front table forgot to remind me to pick them up as I walked out the door. So I'll have to get them to you next time. But we did a series of, we had three conferences in the past six months. So we were, we were pretty busy. At the end of 2022, we did a conference that was called 
the, uh, I hear the sound conference. And it was really, an, 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 we wanted to encourage the people, we wanted to uplift the people and share a word with them that God is still God. And a couple months later, we did another conference and it was called the Outpouring Expansion Summit. And in that, it was a teaching uh, on the Holy Spirit. We allowed the Holy Spirit to move. We allowed, we allowed the Holy Spirit to have his way. And he began a series of teachings through, I think we did three day, a three-day conference. And we, brought it, we just had a bunch of ministers just sharing, being led by the Holy Spirit. And, and we, we saw great and, and incredible demonstrations of the Holy Spirit as well. And then just be, at the beginning of May, we had a young adult youth conference, and we titled that the Now Generation. You know, we always pray for our youth. We pray for the young adults. But when we do, a lot of times we pray that we, we call them the next generation. So one time I was just praying. I said, God, what do you want us to do? How do you want us to handle this? We're praying, Lord, we're believing for the next generation. And God stopped me. He goes, whoa, 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 whoa. Why are you calling them the next generation when they're here now? They're here now. So we titled that conference, The Now Generation. And we just had an amazing time. And God did some incredible things through that. So, and, and what we've done, and Ty, Ty came with me today, and he, he's uh, one of my brothers, and he helps us out, part of the family, and um, takes care of all of our media and IT stuff. So what Ty did was he created a website, and we had these business cards made, and I have this from the now generation, but all you got to do is take out your phone, and instead of taking a selfie like you always do, just scan that QR code in the back, and it'll take you to our website, and it has all the messages uploaded there. Messages, certain messages from the services, and then there's also pre-recorded messages that, we, that the Holy Spirit had us do, God led us to do, and so those are all there. They're all posted. Log on, watch it. I think you can even navigate through the site, right, Ty? And you can find the other two conferences. All the messages are there as well. So, get on. I'll give these to Pastor here. Make sure my credit card is not in there. <laughs> and, and make sure you get a, at least get a picture of it or at least get a card. Uh, if you need more, let me know and I'll, I'll send out some more. But we want you to get on there. We want you to watch all of those messages. You know, we, we did the, the youth conference. And God put it on my heart. I need you to do this before... Uh, school ends for the summer. Once you get it done before graduation. And I was like, well, well God, that, that's it's not much time. But he kept saying, I want you to do it now. Get it done before then. Get it done before then. He just put it on my heart. Get it done before then. So we scrambled and, and everything just came together like it always does when God's involved. So it came together. We had our conference. It was amazing. It was about identity. So we spoke on the, the, we taught on the identity of who you are in Christ. And then a week later, there was a shooting in Farmington. And it was a senior that was graduating. And then I knew why God had us hold that conference before graduation. He had us do that before the incident occurred. And everything we taught on, the Holy Spirit had us teach on during that conference is what that young man needed to hear of who he is in Christ, of how much God loves you, of how valuable the youth and young adults are to God. And we recorded some videos, and we had a number of different people record videos, but those videos were so real. They spoke from the heart. And people shared some intimate 
testimonies. And they, they became very transparent and said, this is what I went through. This is what I dealt with. But God brought us through. See, a lot of times we think there are some things we can't talk about in church. We think there are some things that we can't discuss with people in the church. We can't talk about this. We can't talk about that. We can't deal with this. We can't bring this to people in the church because they'll be thinking about, and we're afraid they'll judge us, and they'll be thinking, how could you have done that? And all of that's just a lie from the enemy. Come on, we've all been there. We've all faced things. We've all dealt with things. But God has been there the whole time. And so as we, we shared all those messages, you know, it was just heart-wrenching to see the, the events that happened. But we know the messages are still there. So please get a card, take a card, and, and, and watch the messages. We, we encourage you and, and allow God to be a blessing. Amen? Hallelujah. So, you ready to get in the Word? So this morning, and it was funny because I, I struggled with this all week. And I was asking God, God, what do you want me to share? It's Father's Day. What do you want me to talk about? All week, all week, all week, all week. And, and the same thing kept popping up in my, in my spirit. I want you to share this. I want you to share this. I want you to share this. And I was like, oh, but it's Father's Day. I want you to share this. I want you to share this. It's Father's Day. So finally yesterday, I text pastor. I said, hey, is there anything specific you want me to teach on? He goes, no, just be led by the Spirit. I was like, oh, man. I thought he was going to lead me in a certain direction. <laughs> but this morning, God wants me to talk to you about giving. About giving. It's too late to look down. I already see you all. <laughs> giving. God wants me to share a word with you about giving. You know, giving's important. Jesus, there, there's more recorded scripture, over 2,000 scriptures on giving, and only about 500 on prayer and, and 500 on, uh, on hell, heaven and hell. Both are important. Prayer is important. Knowing God's important. But there are four times more verses on giving than there are about prayer. Think about that. Four times more in the Bible. So why is giving so important to God? Why is it something that, that God continually put in his word? The Bible says, where your heart is, there your treasure will be also. Right? Right? How many believe the Bible says that? Yeah? You're wrong. If you were on a game show, I'd hit the button and say, eh. The Bible says, where your treasure is, there your heart will follow. We turn it around sometimes. We think where your heart is, there your treasure is. But the Bible says, where your treasure is, your heart will follow. Think about that. So where you, what you value is where you spend your money. Like Pastor was saying, McDonald's will be there. If you hold back from your offering, from your tithe, to go to McDonald's, 
what does that say about McDonald's over God's house? See, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. That's why God is, that, that's why he, he teaches, he taught so much, Jesus taught so much on giving. Because he knows where you invest is where your heart is going to follow. Think about it. If, you, if all the money goes to your kids and your grandkids, guess where your heart's going to go? If all your money goes into that nice new car, guess where your heart's going to go? But when we honor God first, oh, come on, are you here this morning? I said when we honor God first, when we honor God first, guess where your heart will go? Oh, come on. It's quiet in this Holy Ghost-filled church. Look what the message says. It is obvious, isn't it? The place where your treasure is, is the place you will most want to be. And the place you'll end up being. Y'all look at me like I'm speaking Spanish this morning. <laughs> Read it one more time. It's obvious. This is this message translation. It's obvious. Is it obvious to you? It's obvious, isn't it? The place where your treasure is, is the place you will most want to be. And it's the place where you'll end up being. Uh, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Wow. Wow. Imagine if your heart, imagine if your treasure was in giving. Imagine if you honored giving. You know, Sunday morning, isn't the time when you decide whether you're going to give your tithes or not. Sunday morning, it's not when you decide whether you're going to be a tither or not. You decide when you're going to tithe the moment you get your increase. So if you get paid on Thursday, Thursday is the day when you decide whether you're going to tithe or not. Not Sunday morning. Because on Thursday, or on Friday, or whenever it is that, that you get your increase, that is the very moment when you decide if you're going to tithe. Because you either say 10%, that's God's. And I deal with this. And I even saw that, that, that they made a way that you can actually give when you're not in church. So you can give your tithes when you, right, the moment you get paid. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Come on. If you get paid on Wednesday at 12.01, on, and then, or Thursday actually, at 12.01, then at 12.02, they've made a way that you can actually give your tithe right after. <laughs> See, he's getting it. He's getting excited. <laughs> That's when you decide. That's when you decide you're going to give. The moment you get your increase. And do you know tithing's even prophetic? Malachi tells us, bring all the tithe into the storehouse. Well, what's a tithe? Tithe is 10%. Right? It's a percentage. 
a percentage of what? Your increase. So if you don't tithe, what are you saying? You're saying, I didn't get any increase this week. Oh, let me try this side over here. When you don't tithe, you're saying, what you're really saying is, I didn't get an increase this week. Or you're saying, I didn't get paid this week. Or you're saying, I didn't get any income this week. Or you're saying, I didn't get any money this week. Or you're saying, nothing multiplied in my accounts this week. Or you're saying, there's been nothing but subtraction in my bank accounts this week. Come on, come on, come on. You are actually prophesying over your finances that there is no increase. Zero. Why would you do that to yourself? I know you like yourself more than that. I like you more than that. But I'm not going to give your ties for you. <laughs> Here's another thing about, about Malachi. Have you ever noticed it says, bring the tithe? Bring is the key word. Bring is the key word. Pastor, can you bring me your Bible? Thank you. You can sit down. Now, can you bring me your Bible? She said, I already gave it to you. What are you trying to say? I'm trying to say, you can't bring what you don't already have. She already gave it to me. So she brought what she had. But after she gave it to me, she didn't have it anymore. So when she didn't have it anymore, then she had nothing to bring. So you cannot bring your tithe if you don't have an increase. But God says, he didn't say go out and earn the tithe. He didn't say go out and try and find the tithe. He said bring the tithe. So that means you already have it. Oh, don't look at me in that tone of voice. He said, bring it. I've already given it to you. It's in your possession. Now, bring it to the storehouse. Wow. Wow. Say wow. Wow. Now say it backwards. Some of you had to think about that for a little while. You're a wow. Backwards. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> so one, tithing's prophetic. Two, bring the tithes. You already have it. It's already in your possession. Isn't that good? You see how good God is? He already set it up. Now it's just up to us if we're going to do it or not. If we're going to trust him. Proverbs 11.24 says, There's one that scatters, yet increases. But there is one who withholds more than is meat, or more than is right. Yet, it leads to poverty. There's one that scatters, yet increases. There's one that holds back more than is right, but that leads to poverty. Notice, notice, notice. The one who holds back, he still gave. 
Because the Bible says he held back more than what was right. So he gave some. He gave a dollar. He gave a, a, a five. We call that tipping God. <laughs> he came to church and he gave God a tip. Here you go, God. But he held back. In other words, he didn't give the whole tithe. So you may think, hey, I'm doing good. I'm doing all right. I put, I put a couple of bills in the offering, so I'm doing fine. But the Bible says if you don't bring the whole tithe, he says that leads to poverty. But there's one who brings, who scatters, who showers, who becomes generous. And he's the one that increases. I love what the message says. The world of the generous gets larger and larger. Oh, you should have got excited on that one. Come on, come on. The world of the generous gets larger and larger, and the world of the stingy, don't look at anybody. The world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. In Hebrews 11, we read that it says, By faith, we know that the worlds were framed by the word of God. By faith, we know that the worlds were framed by the, word, by the word of God. Well, we're made in the image of God, right? We're made in the likeness of God, right? And after God created man, what did he do? He breathed his life. He breathed his spirit into man, and man became a living being. Well, the moment God breathed his life and his breath into us, he also gave us the power to speak things into existence, just like God did. He gave us that same creative power in our voice. Well, if the worlds were framed by the word of God that we know by faith according to Hebrews 11, so guess what? Your world is framed by your words as well. Come on. Your world. So if you begin to speak lack, and you begin to say, oh, I'm just broke, guess what you're doing? You're framing your world. You're shrinking your world. You're making things smaller and tighter in your world. Oh, I don't have enough money for that. Oh, I'm just broke. Oh, this never happens. Oh, I don't have money for this. I don't have money for that. Come on. You're shrinking your world. And your world is becoming smaller and smaller and smaller. Come on. But if you decide that, hey, I'm a tither, I'm a giver, and I live under an open window of heaven, and I know my God is supplying every one of my needs, and I have more than enough to be a giver, I have more than enough to sow, I have more than enough, I have access that I can be a blessing. Your world now is getting larger and larger and larger. Woo! Thank you for your enthusiasm. Come on. People say, I'm on a fixed budget. And I always say, who fixed it? <laughs> who fixed it? Because God didn't. I said, God didn't. But you're limiting yourself on what God wants to do. Come on. Pastor Mark Hankins says, God, God spoke to him one time. He was talking, he's praying about giving. And God told him, if you'll get addicted to giving, I'll support your habit. <laughs> Come on, you here this morning? Come on. You get addicted to giving, and God says, I'll support your habit. You always have plenty. Come on, come on, come on. 
And he says, and you'll give more than you ever gave before, and you'll still have more than you ever had before afterwards. Come on, come on. Come on. It's the word of God. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Where your treasure is, is the most desired place you'll want to be. And sooner or later, you'll end up there too. So we see all throughout Scripture the concept of giving. Now people give, they give, they give, and they give. Turn with me to 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy 6. And I'm going to start at verse 17. Now, in, now in, this chapter, in this book, Paul is writing to Timothy. And Timothy is the pastor of a church. So in other words, Paul is writing to a church. He's writing to a pastor. And this is what it says. Commend those who are rich in this present age. Y'all missed it. Remember, Paul is writing to a pastor. And he is encouraging the pastor to encourage his congregation. And he says to Timothy, command those who are rich. Well, what does that mean? Well, when I read that, that tells me that there's supposed to be rich people in the church. Amen. Oh, yeah. Let me try you guys over here. <laughs> Timothy's a pastor. Paul's writing to the pastor. And he's telling the pastor, encourage your congregation. He's telling them, tell the rich people in your congregation this message. <laughs> there are supposed to be rich people in the church. So when I, when I saw that, when I got that revelation, I just signed up. I said, put me on that program. <laughs> I love what Jesse DePlanis says. I tried poor, I tried rich, I like rich better. <laughs> Come on. He didn't say, condemn the rich. No, he's giving the rich instructions. Come on, God wants to increase you. God wants to take you higher and higher. God wants to bless you. He wants to bless you so you will be a blessing. How can you bless somebody when you got empty pockets? Oh, just bless you, Lord. I'll be, I'll be praying for you. No. God is trying to increase you. He's trying to get something to you. See, and Brother Kenneth E. Hagan and from uh, Rama Church in Tulsa, Oklahoma, he had a vision with God. He was talking with God. And God told him, I'm not opposed to my children being rich. He said, I'm opposed to them being covetous where they value money more than God. So he says, tell your congregation, tell the rich people in your congregation. <laughs> so is he talking to anybody here today? Oh, I see a couple of hands go up. I see a couple of shaky hands just going like this. <laughs> Come on. Is he talking to you this morning? Is he talking to you this morning? He's saying, tell the rich people in your church 
right now, in this present age, don't be haughty, nor to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, look at this, who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Ooh. Ooh. God wants you to have those nice things. God wants you to live in that nice house. God wants you to have that nice car. But he doesn't want those things to have you. Come on. How are you going to drive around in a beat-up car that's barely going and say, praise God, look what the Lord has done. (laughs) Come on. Are you here this morning? Come on. When God wants to do something amazing in your life. Hallelujah. So don't trust in the things. Don't trust in the riches, but we trust in the living God. So God God blessed me with a beautiful truck a couple years ago. Incredible truck. I wasn't even looking for a new vehicle because I was happy with the one I had. I took it in for some uh, recall work. So they were working on it. While they were working on it, they said, hey, man, this, this, you kept this thing in great shape. We'd love to buy it back. I said, no, I'm happy with it. So they, they started working on it, and then they came back. And when I came to pick up the vehicle, they said, hey, okay, we want to buy this back from you. And this is how much you bought it for because I bought it at that dealership. And they said, this is what we want to buy it back for. So they bought it back for like $1,000 less than what I bought it for. So I was like, man, that's a pretty good deal. I said, all right, let's do it. I said, but if you're taking my truck, now I need something to drive. So I started looking around the lot, and I saw this beautiful truck there. I mean, it had everything in it, except the driver. (laughs) Beautiful truck. Everything in it. Leather top to bottom, powered everything. I mean, you name it, it had it. GM didn't make a nicer truck. That was the top of the line. And then I look at the price tag and I was like, whoo. I said, no, I'm not going to pay that. So, went back and forth, back and forth. And then finally they came down quite a bit in the price. And then I got cold feet. And I started thinking, what are people going to say with a pastor driving such an expensive vehicle? So I backed off. It's like, man, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. And then God spoke to me. And he goes, you go all around preaching on giving. I said, yes, sir. Preaching everything that that you taught me. And you preach that God blesses those that are givers. I said, yes, sir, you do. I know you do. And he says, why are you letting man steal the blessing that I'm trying to get to you? And then God said, they're talking about you anyway. So what does it matter if they say anything else? I said, okay, God, let's do it. So I called the dealer. I said, okay, let's do it. I'll be there tomorrow and pick it up. So I went and got it. Just blown away by what God did. And do you know that truck has been one of the biggest witnessing tools that I have ever had. I'll be parked at a gas station, a fueling station. Someone will walk up to it. Man, that's a beautiful truck. I said, yes, I love it. God's been good to me. Such a beautiful truck. Yeah. 
said, can I look inside? Sure, open it up. Man, everything is leather. I said, yeah, it, it's, and it drives so beautiful. It just, it's everything. You couldn't imagine how, how smooth it drives. Man, it's so beautiful. I said, man, I said, you, I said, you must have a rich father. And I said, you have no idea. And they said, what do you do? I said, I work in the family business. Oh, man, you guys must have a tremendous business. I said, we go everywhere. I said, we're all over the place. And he goes, what's your father do? I said, my father does it all. He does everything. There's not a thing he doesn't do. And he's on and on and on. And then he goes, who's your dad? Who's your father? I said, God Almighty, he is my father. And I said, he's the one that gave me this vehicle. He's the one that opened the door. He's the one that paved the way so I could have this. And they look at me with the strangest look in their eyes. You're a preacher? I said, I sure am. I share the gospel everywhere I go. And I turned right around and said, do you know my father? If you don't, I'd love to introduce you to him right now. At a gas station. Come on. And that's happened to me time and time and time again. And God just says, imagine if you felt more concerned about what man said and you never received the blessing. See, God wants to get stuff to you. He's trying to bless you. He's trying to get something to you. But first he wants to know, can I trust you? The Bible says, if you'll be faithful in the little things, I know you will be faithful in the larger things. We're wanting him to, to increase us to the, to the big things, to the larger things, when we haven't shown him that we can be faithful in the little, in the small things. A small thing like 10%. Oh, you thought I forgot about that. Huh? Small thing like 10%. Say, God, this is yours. I just return it back to you. It belongs to you. So he says, charge them who are rich in this present age to not be haughty, to to not trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Let them do good that they be rich in good works. Look at this. Ready to give, willing to share, storing up for themselves good foundations for the time to come that they may lay hold of eternal life. He wants to bless you beyond your wildest dreams so you can do good for other people, to bless other people. Your giving unlocks that. You don't know the countless times when we've been sitting at a restaurant and God says, hey, I want you to bless your server. I said, okay, God. We were just at, at dinner, what, last Monday, Ty? Monday or last Monday or Wednesday. It was a late dinner. We just got out of church. We went with a couple of the pastors and we went to dinner. We were sitting at Olive Garden eating and service was horrible bad 
And we were just waiting, waiting, waiting a long time for our food. I think we were the last ones out of the restaurant service was so bad. And the waitress kept coming out, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And obviously she was distraught, something was on her mind. But God said, bless her. I said, okay, God. So she brought us her bill. I took the bill and gave her a tip. And I said, yeah, thank you. Thank you for helping us. She took, took the bill. And she turned around and she goes, are you serious? She saw the tip. She goes, is this right? I said, yes. We just want to be a blessing. I said, in fact, come here. I don't think I gave you enough. And I pulled out. And then the tears just started flowing out of her eyes. And she goes, you don't know how much I needed this. I said, no, I don't, but God does. And he's the one that told me to do it. And I looked her in her eyes and said, I just want you to know that God loves you. And she just broke. Come on. Your generosity will open the door for you to share the word and be a witness to people that are otherwise closed off. But how can you do that when you've got a pocket full of lack? And God says, come on, just trust me. Just trust me. Come on, bring the tithe. Bring the offering. Can I blow your mind? Can I, can I just blow your mind this morning? We love Philippians 4, right? And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory. Amen? We know that. We quote it. We stand on it. But do you know the word tithe does not appear in Philippians? So Philippians, all the increase, all the blessing, everything that happens in Philippians, it's talking about your offering, not your tithe. So people don't tie the lick, but still they claim Philippians 4. My God shall supply all my need. Come on. The blessing of Philippians 4 begins to flow after you've sowed, your, you've given your tithe, and now you begin to give an offering. You're over and above giving. That's what enacts all the promises of giving and reaping and harvesting in Philippians 4. It's your offering. Come on. You're over and above giving. Hallelujah. And God keeps good records. Hallelujah. So you can't skip the, the, the tithe and go right to the offering. Amen. The tithe comes first. Then the offering comes after that. Then you say, my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory. Because I'm a tither and I'm a giver. Amen. Come on. I'm a tither and I'm a giver. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, after all that, I want to say something else that's going to blow your mind even more. I don't believe in tithing. And I don't tithe. Some of you are. <laughs> Pastor said, give me the microphone. <laughs> I don't tithe. But what I do do is I triple tithe. That means I just don't give 10%. But I give 30%. I'm a 30% giver, and I'm on my way to being a 40% giver. God and I are having this little game back and forth, and it's been fun. 
It's like, God, I want to be, I want to be a 40% giver. So one year I gave and I gave and I gave and I gave. And at the end of the year, when I tallied everything up, I was only at 34%. <laughs> well, what happened? I gave like, I gave, I gave 40%. But God just increased me so much that my 40%, when it was all said and done, with all the increase he brought in, only added up to 34. So I start out every year. I want to be a 40% giver this year. And God just keeps increasing. So the closest I got was 37% one year. After that, it's been going down. Because God just keeps blessing me. He's just giving it here, here, here. But I will get there one day. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Come on. God's trying to get something to you. God wants to bless you. God wants to increase you. God, he didn't design tithing for you to go broke. He didn't design giving for you to go into debt. He didn't design it for you to, to, to drop and lower, go lower and lower. No, no, no. He designed giving in order to increase you. The Bible says he will multiply your seed sown. Multiply your seed sown. What does that mean? If you sow $100, God's going to multiply that seed. So instead of sowing 100, after he multiplies it, it's like he sowed 1,000. Now, would you rather have the harvest off 100 or the harvest off 1,000? It's not a trick question. <laughs> Once you put the seed in the ground, he's multiplied it. He's multiplied it. He's increasing you. So he didn't design tithing. For you to go into decrease, he in designed tithing and giving for you to increase, to go higher, to go higher and go higher. In Acts 10, we read about Cornelius, how he had a vision and, and he sent for Paul. You remember that? He had a vision and then he called for Paul. Paul had another vision and, and God told him, go see Cornelius. And when they, when, when, in Acts 10, the very first verse, it tells us that, there, that Cornelius, it tells us who he was. That he was a devout man who feared God. Who gave alms generously. And who prayed all the time. Three things that he did. It says, there was a certain man named Cornelius. So a specific man. A specific person. And the Bible tells us the three things this man did. That he gave alms generously. That he was a devout man who feared God. And that he always prayed. Because of those three things, God sent the Apostle Paul to his house. And when the Apostle Paul showed up, he began to preach. And you go down a few verses, around 14, it says that while Paul was still preaching, the Holy Spirit fell on everybody in the house. Did you get that? The Holy Spirit fell on everyone in the house. What did this man do? He feared the Lord. He gave generously, and he prayed. And because of that, Paul came, and the Holy Spirit filled the entire house. All his children, all his grandchildren, all his workers, everybody there was baptized in the Holy Spirit that day. Come on, there are some things that you're giving will do that money cannot buy. 
How much is it to you? How, what's the value that, that you can put on having your entire family saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, and speaking in other tongues? And all he did was give. He was a generous giver. In fact, in the vision, it says that your giving, your generosity has come up as a memorial. Another you can, that can also be translated a monument to God before God. The way I envision it is God is sitting on his throne. And while he's sitting on his throne, this huge monument comes floating by God. And God says, wait, 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 stop, stop, stop. What is that thing? And the angel said, that's Cornelius' giving. Oh, I'm going to try this side over here. That God's in heaven, sitting on the throne. And this giant monument comes before God. And God says, what is that? And the angels tell him, that is Cornelius' giving. Ooh. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. I said his giving got God's attention. I said his giving got God's attention. And when it got God's attention, he said, whoa, 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 send the apostle Paul to Cornelius' house. And when, the, when, when Paul gets to Cornelius' house, I want you to save everybody in his house. And I want you to fill everybody in that house with the Holy Ghost. I want you to have them to be baptized. I want them to speak in tongues. I want them to be dancing. I want them to be praising. Come on. I am going to answer Cornelius' prayer because I see his giving that has come up before me. You can't buy that. But God, when he sees your generosity, will cause those things to happen. Come on, some of your kids may be out there. You don't know what they did last night. You don't know what they were drinking on, what they were smoking on, what they were doing on. But because of your giving, come on, that God could be sending somebody to them right now where they are, and they'll be calling, speaking in tongues. Woo. You all too calm for me. I, we need those kids back in here because I'm getting excited now. Come on, come on, come on. That's what God wants to do. That's what he wants to do. Come on. And then we go over to the book of Mark. You remember the, the, the widow with the two mites? Right? The widow with the two mites. The Bible says Jesus was sitting next to the offering plate. And he was making comments while people were giving. And he said, those that had a lot gave a lot. And he's just watching. Coming in, someone put some money in. He says, yeah, you spent more than that at Walmart. <laughs> Somebody else come. Yeah, you spent more than that on that new car you have. Someone else comes. Oh, you, you gave more to your grandkids than that. Mm -hmm. And then this widow comes. And it says she threw in two mites. Her whole livelihood. She threw it in. And Jesus calls his disciples, said, come here, guys, I want you to see this. This woman, she gave more than everybody else. They gave out of their excess. But she gave out of her livelihood. Come on. 
And the verse says that she threw in those two mites. She threw in her livelihood. Well, what are you saying, Pastor? What she did was she went up to the offering plate and she says, I am no longer poor and I throw in my poverty. I throw in my lack. I low in, throw, I throw in my deficit and I receive everything that Jesus has for me. Come on now. <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. She went. She says, out, out of her livelihood. Come on, come on. She went. She goes, I throw in lack. I low, throw in poverty. I throw in sickness. I throw in disease. I throw in all of that because that is not who I am. I throw it in. And Jesus says she gave more than everybody else. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. This is God's plan. This is God's design for giving. Throw it in. Don't hold back. Come on. I love one time this pastor came and, and he was talking to another pastor and he said, man, I'm just not making it. I'm just not making it. I'm struggling. I'm struggling so bad. He went to, to Brother Hagin. I don't know how I'm going to make it. So he's like, I, I just quit tithing. I can't afford to tithe. He, and he went to Brother Hagin. What do I need to do? And Brother Hagin told him, well, give 30%. I said, I just told you I'm not making it, so I can't even give 10. He goes, what difference does it make? If you're not making it, what difference does it make if you give 10 or 30% anyway? Just give. Trust God. Imagine what would happen. Imagine what would happen if we acted like the Bible was true. Imagine what would happen if we acted like the Bible was true. Whew. Imagine how your life would change if you acted like the Bible was true. Imagine how your faith would increase if you imagined or you believed the Bible was true. And you just acted on it. And you just gave like the Bible is true. <laughs> just imagine come on because I like one pastor he goes we, we put um, we put Jesus glitter on everything people say how are you doing oh I'm just doing great when everything's falling apart so, so we spread the Jesus glitter in church oh God you're, you're my God Oh, I trust you, God. Oh, God, you, my faith is in you. Oh, God, I give you everything, Lord. Jesus glitter flying all over the place. And then you walk outside and you're like, I have no idea how I'm going to pay this bill this week. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Imagine if the Bible was true. Imagine if we just acted like the Bible was true and we took God at his word. This couple came to me one time, and they, they were having trouble giving. And they came, and they said, we, we just, we're just fighting this. We, we just don't have enough. We, we can't make it. We're, we're not making it, and so we just can't give. We want to give our tithe, but we just, we just can't make ends meet. And so I looked at them, and I said, well, I mean, I'm sorry you lost your salvation, so, so let's pray right now, 
and, and let's make Jesus the Lord of your life. The wife said, no, 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 we're saved. We're just having problems giving. Now, we just came to tell you that we're having issues with giving. I said, oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, well, let's just pray so that you can receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And she said, no, 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 no. And now she was getting even more upset. No, no, no. And she was getting real direct. No, no, no. We are saved. We're just having problems giving. And I said, okay, well, let's pray that, that Jesus will be Lord of your life. And at that moment, the husband sat back and he just goes, oh. And the wife looked at him. What? What are you owing about? She was, she was mad by this time. I made her mad. <laughs> Not on purpose. Looked at her and said, Why are you, what are you owing about? And I looked at her and I said, you, you get it, right? He goes, yes, I do. And I looked at her and I said, so God is strong enough to save you from all your sin. But God isn't strong enough to save you in your finances. And she sat back. Come on. We have faith in God for our salvation, which is the greatest miracle ever. But yet, we don't have faith in God for our finances. Come on. Think about that. Think about that. What we're really saying is, God, you saved me. You saved my soul from eternal condemnation and living in hell. And I thank you for it. But, God, my financial burden is way up here. We're saying, God, my financial predicament is greater than my salvation. When we talk about lack in that way. Come on. If God saved your soul, how is he not going to deliver you financially? Come on. It's all there. He did it all. And he's seated at the right hand of the Father. He's done. He's, his work is done. It's finished. It's complete. He said it on the cross. It is finished. Yes. Now it's when are you going to get on board? Yeah. When are you going to start trusting him? Come on. And we start bringing our tithe. We bring our offerings into the storehouse like God says. And then God begins to pour out the blessing. Into our lives. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And we know we hear accounts all the time of people that have gone to heaven. There was one gentleman that went to heaven. And when he, when he went to heaven, as soon as he got in, he says there was a huge, huge mansion in heaven massive, bigger than all the others. And there were people standing all around it, just gathered, gazing at it. It was so beautiful. It was so massive. And he got up and he walked up to the people and he was looking at it and he goes, it was just breathtaking. And then he asked, whose mansion is this and one guy turned around in the crowd and he said you remember the woman who gave the two mites this is her mansion <laughs> this huge incredible mansion in heaven whose mansion is this they said the woman that gave the two mites this is where she lives now. <laughs> Come on, are you here this morning? <laughs> Ooh, glory.
Glory to God. Come on. You can't have Mercedes living and skateboard giving. <laughs> God did not design giving for you to go broke. We continue along the path of not giving. It hardens our heart. Well, how can you say that? We read it in Malachi. Have you ever read Malachi and read where the Bible, Malachi 3, we know the verse, and God says, you have robbed me. And what do the people say? How have we robbed you? Have you ever noticed the disrespect there? If God says something to you, what kind of nerve and how hardened does your heart have to be that you would reply back to God and say, how did I do that? How did I rob you? You said I robbed you. How did I rob you? Imagine the attitude of the people that they had towards God that they would have the audacity to speak to God that way. All throughout the book of Malachi. How have we done this? Because when God speaks, our answer should be, yes, Lord. Forgive me, Father, and not have a rebuttal to what he says. Not giving will harden your heart. And once your heart begins to get hardened, we have trouble hearing from God. We have trouble discerning God's voice. And it leads us further and further away from God. Tithing, 10%. Anything above your tithe is an offering. When you give your offering, you move into Philippians. Now you're in Philippians' place where my God has supplied all my need according to his riches and glory. Amen. Come on. God loves a cheerful giver. Yes. Isaiah 119 says, you must be willing and obedient. Amen. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat of the good of the land. That means you can't give your tithe grudgingly. You can't give your offering grudgingly. You do that, you're not being willing about it. And you've cut yourself off. It's a heart issue. It's not, I have to give my tithe. I have to give my offering. It becomes, I give get to give my offering. I get to give my tithe. That God has blessed me and I can be a blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Philippians 4.15, Paul says, in the beginning, when I started the gospel and I left Macedonia, no one partnered with me in giving and receiving but you. Notice, giving and receiving. We teach a lot about giving, but there's also a receiving part. God wants to bless you. 
God wants to pour out his blessing upon you and your household. He wants to bless you so much. Pastor Mark says God wants to bless you so much, you'll be advertisement for, of how he treats his children. Amen. People will look at you and say, how are you so blessed? It's my father. The Amplified of that verse says, No one partnered with me in giving and receiving but you and opened up a debit and credit account in heaven. <laughs> you know you have a debit and credit account in heaven? And God's keeping the books? And God can count? We know he can count because he wrote a book called Numbers. <laughs> so every time you give, every time you sow seed, you're making a deposit into your heavenly account. And as you make that deposit, he's putting a credit on it. And now, he has something that he's going to take and bless every one of us with. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's our God. Yes. That's our Father. And he's trying to get something to you. And he's trying to move stuff to you. Yes. And he says, all I need is to see your faithfulness. All I need to see is that I can trust you. And the more he can trust you, the more he can get through you. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. That's why we say, I'm a tither, I'm a giver, and I live under an open window of heaven. Amen? Smith Wigglesworth says, My Father God takes care of me in grand style. <laughs> in grand style. Come on. I eat the best. I live in the best. I drive the best. Amen. Come on. My Father God takes care of me in grand style. Amen. Hallelujah. Brother, Brother Hagen says, come on, you call the money in. I'm a tither. I'm a giver. Go angels. Go ministering spirits. Cause the money to come. Satan, take your hands off my money. Come on. I'm an heir of God, a joint heir with Christ. Hallelujah. And the money will come. Glory to God. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Praise the Lord. Come on. Come on. Cause the money to come, amen? Woo! There was this pastor in uh, back east, built this beautiful church, huge church, amazing church. They started out with nothing. And one time they were talking to him. They said, how did you do all this? And the pastor looked at them square in the eye. And he said, I just danced the money in. <laughs> he said, I just danced the money in. Oh, you're not hearing me. He said, I just danced the money in. He said, every time, every time a deficit came, every time a struggle came, he said, I just took off dancing. And he said, I just dance the money in. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. He said, I just dance the money in. Come on. Hallelujah. I just danced it in. Come on. I just danced it in. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. I just danced the money in. Come on, is there something you're facing? Is there a financial deficit? Is there a financial difficulty that's coming your way? Is there something that is standing in front of you? Come on. That you're not sure how you're going to get around? That you're not sure how you're going to make it? Come on. This morning you can declare, I'm a tither. I'm a giver. I live under an open window of heaven. Come on. And I'm just going to dance the money in. Hallelujah. Come on. God is working. God is working. Yeah. Woo. Ha, ha, ha. 
<laughs> he just danced it in. Come on, are you needing anything this morning? Is there more, Pastor, you're believing for? Is there more you want to do? Come on, come on. Is there more that God has put onto your heart? Is there more vision? Is there more desire? Is there more calling? Are there greater things that God wants you to do? Come on, then you just dance the money in. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Is there anybody here today that's believing something for God? Come on. You just got to dance the money in. Come on. Woo. Let me ask you this. How would you act? How would you act if you already had the thing that you've been believing God for? Woo, that's it. I said, how would you act? Are you believing God for anything? Have you been praying for anything? Have you been seeking God for something? How would you act if you already had the thing that you've been believing God for? Yes. Ooh, how would you act? Come on. I guarantee you wouldn't act like you're acting right now. <laughs> how would you act? How would you act? Are you believing God for something? Are you calling in things? Come on. How would you act if you already received the thing that you've been believing God for? Woo, come on, come on. I just lose my mind. I think I'd go a little bit crazy. Come on. Because I know my God has supplied. My God has supplied. My God has supplied. Woo. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> tithing offering it's biblical and it works trust God with your finances put it into his hands come on the Bible says bring it you already have it in your possession are you going to trust God and sow it in? Come on. I don't want to come back next year and find you in the same place that you are right now. I don't even want to come back next week and find you in the same place that you are right now. Come on. I want to see you increase. I want to see you grow. I want to see God working in your life. And I want to see that growth in you and in your finances and in your spiritual walk that shows that you are trusting God. Ha, ha, ha. That'll make a tadpole slap a whale. Ha, ha, ha. Give. Yeah. And act like the Bible is true. Amen? 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 Hallelujah. Give God a shout of praise. No, 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 no. I said give God a shout of praise this morning. Hallelujah. Pastor. Amen. What a word. Amen. Hallelujah. And if you need prayer, Pastor Arnold can pray with you. Amen. Amen.